Hey everybody, Dakota here with Empty Wallet Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over the new Rix LRF. As you can see here, we're opening the box. It comes with a rechargeable CR123 battery. It actually comes with two of them. And then these are Tenergy uh, 3.7 volt rechargeable batteries. It also comes with the hex key here. Not sure what size it is, but it is for the. And then here you see the offset mount. Uh, it's a pretty big offset just because the objective lens on the thermal scope is so big. Um, so it's going to hang out a little over two inches. And this is the LRF. As you can see, it's not a whole lot. Uh, there's the power button, and here's the battery cap. So the Apex company um, made a battery extension for it already. So you can run the 18650s or 16650, sorry, uh, instead of the CR123s that come with it. Um, I know that's a pretty popular item right now. I'll put that on the screen for you guys. Alright, and I'm also throwing up the new adjustable mount that they have, so it's not going to be locked in place uh, in line with your rifle. You can adjust it to your crosshairs as you need. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and give a test run for the charger. This is the charger that came with the Leap 3 scope. Um, a lot of people are asking if the LRF batteries are able to be used with the stock charger that came with the scope, and the answer is yes. Now, they are very short batteries, so there is not a lot of spring retention there. Uh, as you can see, it just wiggles very easily, but it does connect, it does charge. I let them charge overnight, made sure it worked. Everything was good to go on there. All right, now as far as actually mounting everything goes, just taking a first look at it all, um, I was pretty concerned that I was gonna have to move my scope either forward or backward inside of the QD mount that they came with, um, but it looks like the way that it's set up now, it's gonna have just enough clearance to go ahead and mount it to the actual scope. Uh, I'm running a bolt gun, so doing the rail attachment option is not necessarily viable. Um, this is a very old school 22-250 caliber Remington 700 gun that I'm running for coyotes right now. Alright, and here I have it mounted off. Uh, all you have to do is double press the power button and the laser turns on. So it is a pretty powerful laser. Um, I was able to use it outside in the daytime with no issues and at nighttime it's definitely pretty bright for a couple hundred yards. All right, now as you can see, I have moved the gun around quite a bit. Um, the laser rangefinder is now mounted to the two o'clock if you're looking behind the scope. Um, the first place I wanted to mount it, it was messing up with the QD levers. And the second place that I wanted to mount it was messing up with the action of the rifle. Um, I couldn't really do it to the 10 o'clock um, if you're looking from the scope just because I am a right-handed shooter so I'd be using my left hand for the menu and um, polarity knobs on the left and top knobs there so I put it to the 2 o'clock I usually don't use my digital zoom um, mainly because I am a right-handed shooter I have my hand behind the gun and I'm not gonna leave my shooting hand from my rifle to use my digital zoom all the time so I have it as far out of the way as possible um, just looking at it already it does look like it's gonna get pretty crowded on the mount if you're running a bolt gun where you can't mount the LRF onto your rifle platform somewhere so just mounting the LRF on the scope itself it's already becoming pretty clustered because no matter where you mount it it is blocking one or two of those knobs or if I were to slide it back towards the uh, optical zoom there, um, regardless of the side that I had it on, it will be blocking the throw lever for the optical zoom. Um, so as far as field use goes, 
So it's going to take some getting used to with everything being so clustered, uh, especially you have gloves on, trying to grab the left and top knob to make the adjustments on the fly. Um, it could be pretty difficult. All right, now I have changed the camera angle once again. So this is how the LRF looks whenever you're looking into the scope. So you can see it's up in the two o'clock position. Uh, it doesn't really block a lot of your field of view if you have your face backed up off trying to scan the fields. All right, so this is just out to my shed or barn, whatever you want to call it. Um, the LRF does continuously arrange when it is turned on. So there's no start and stop ranging. If it's on and connected to your scope, it's going to range constantly. Um, most of these things that I'm shooting, like this tree, the shed, the other things, I also verified with my actual laser range finder that I use in the daytime. Uh, that one goes up to a thousand yards and it was all within a yard of each other as I was scanning. So it does take a second, as you can see here, as I kind of swing it across, it does kind of take a second to catch up to itself. And that'll wrap everything up here, guys. I appreciate the watch, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments.